Okay, in this video, we are gonna find spherical coordinates for the equation x squared plus y squared minus z squared equals zero, which is actually just a cone um, that has its vertex at the origin. Um, so it's a pretty common type of cone. And uh, let's see what we can do. So for starters, you need to know all of this stuff. So you need to know that x is rho cosine theta sine phi, y is rho sine theta sine phi, z is rho cosine of phi, then you need to know how to find rho, theta, and phi. So x squared plus y squared plus z squared is rho squared, just kind of distance formula. Um, it's also the case that x squared plus y squared equals rho squared sine squared of phi. You can work that out if you um, just kind of start squaring things and look for a Pythagorean identity. Um, it's a useful identity to know. Uh, theta is the inverse tangent of y over x, but it's better to think of it as tan of theta is y over x, and then think about what quadrant you're in in the uh, xy plane to deal with, uh, you know, is it a third quadrant, second quadrant, first, fourth, whatever. I don't know why I said those out of order. Um, and then phi is the inverse cosine of z over rho. It's, it's much less dangerous because of the range of arc cosine. So let's do a problem. So we want to find spherical coordinates for x squared plus y squared minus z squared equals zero. Then we want to write parametric equations for the surface. So we're going to parameterize the surface. So our equation is x squared plus y squared minus z squared equals zero. All right, so in this video, I'm going to take advantage of the fact that I know that x squared plus y squared is rho squared and then sine squared of phi. That's a useful thing, and I don't want to derive it again. Um, I did that in another video, uh, a video about, what was it about? About a right circular cylinder. So if you want to see me derive that, go find that video. All right, let's keep going. So z, I'm just going to replace with um, rho cosine phi, and then square it, and then the whole thing equals zero. Uh, so from here, I don't know, I'm going to, uh, Expand and I'm going to factor rho squared out of everything. So you get rho squared the quantity sine squared of phi minus cosine squared of phi And that equals zero. All right, so from this we get kind of two equations So we either get that rho squared is equal to zero or I'm gonna kind of jump and just say we get that sine squared is equal to cosine squared of phi uh, so let's think about it. We, we know that we're looking for a cone, so there's no way that the equation is just rho equals zero. So this is actually just kind of an extraneous thing. Uh, I want to solve this trig thing in the easiest way possible. And for that, what I'm going to do is divide through by cosine squared, which generally speaking, you don't want to do. If I do that, I'm saying that basically cosine can't be zero, but maybe cosine could be zero. But actually, if you look at the equation above, if cosine is equal to zero, then sine is either one or negative one, but we're squaring sine, so that would just be one. So if cosine is zero, then the equation above ends up rho squared is equal to zero, which we've already discarded. So I know that cosine is not equal to zero, so I can divide by it. So all of that leads me to tangent squared is equal to one, which is really what I wanted. So if tangent is one, tangent squared is one, then either tangent is one or tangent could be negative one. So this is a weird situation, but if you remember what a cone looks like, there's kind of the top half and the bottom half. Each of these, depending on how you look at it, corresponds to one of those options. And it all comes down to, are we allowed to have rho be negative? So uh, if tan of theta is one, and remember, uh, sorry, tan of phi, phi needs to be between zero and pi, so the only option there is pi over four, if tan of phi is negative one and you're between zero and pi, the only option is three pi over four. All right, so it looks like we have two options for this and they correspond to the top half and the bottom half. Um, because remember, phi is the angle with the positive z axis. Um, so let's move on and see if we can write parametric equations. So we're gonna do the thing we usually do. So we found two potential equations. I'm just gonna use pi over four and then I'll explain how I'm getting around the three pi over four um, near the end. So I know that x is rho cosine theta and then sine of phi, and phi is just pi over four. So I could replace sine of pi over four with root two over two. It doesn't really make it look prettier, so I'm just gonna leave it in this case. 
um, y is equal to rho sine of theta sine of phi. So something interesting is kind of happening here where our two parameters in this case will be theta and rho rather than theta and phi, which is almost always the case when you do these things. So our parameters are actually rho and theta. Um, so let's finish this with z. So z is rho and then cosine of phi. So I could replace that with root two over two. All right, so I chose to use pi over four instead of three pi over four. I could write another set of equations where um, I just replace all the pi over fours with three pi over four. But what I'm gonna do instead is just let my parameter vary in a convenient way. So theta, I need to get the whole cone. So I want theta to go from zero to two pi. Almost always the case for theta. What I'm gonna do for rho is instead of say that rho is greater than or equal to zero or just greater than zero, I'm actually just gonna let rho be any real number. And if that's the case, then I actually get both parts of the cone, the top and the bottom. I could have dealt with it by writing two separate sets of equations. That's a lot of writing. And when I can just do this, this seems a little bit easier. So that's what I've decided to do. And we're done. So uh, the equation in spherical, I use just theta equals pi over four. That gives me the cone. Um, I could have used theta equals three pi over four. That also would give me the cone. They technically give me the top and the bottom half if rho has to be greater than zero. But since I chose just to view it as a parameter, um, I let rho be any real number and this will give me the entire cone. So there you go. I hope you found this helpful and good luck.